Before I get into my speech, I want to kind of tell you what my speech is about. My speech is excerpts from my actual journal. Um, and I decided to switch my speech around because something hit me not too long ago that I wanted to share with you. It, it means a lot to me. I hope it means something to you tonight. Um, one of my friends, two weeks ago, two weeks ago he reached out to me, he wrote me a letter, and though the letter was expected, there was a, there was a deep difference in it. The letter, the letter had been addressed from a correctional facility and branded with an inmate personnel number at the end of his name. And if you know me, then you know that names to me mean everything, and they mean everything because I remember being in class and it'd be the first day of school or, or a substitute teacher would be standing in and show his day, right? The teacher would walk in get to his desk, and the teacher will pull out the attendance sheet. And if you were African, if you're foreign, if, you, if, you, if your name is a bit challenging in the least, you knew what was about to go down. <laughs> you knew what, so let me tell you, my name, my name starts in the beginning of the middle of the pack. So every time that, it was the first day of school or a substitute teacher would be standing in. You would see me, Kofi, I'll be at my desk and I'll have my hand over my face, something like this. Because I had to anticipate what was coming. My boys was gonna come at me during lunchtime, so I had to be ready, I had to, I had to get my ammo ready. <laughs> and uh, there was this one day where it was the first day of school, and I had my, I had my hand across my face, and then there, there was this long, drawn-out pause. Something like that, right? <laughs> and I had my hand across my face, and I looked up, I'm like, what's going on? My teacher had his hand across his face, too, because he had gotten to my name, and he was speaking with all of the phonetic gods, like conjuring up, you know, just looking at me, just kept looking down at his paper. <laughs> and then he looked at me like, yep, give me a hint, like this is the million dollar question, <laughs> right? And then he would just give it a shot, he would give it his best shot. I'm looking, he looking, I'm looking, he looking. And he go, uh, coffee? <laughs> and it was over at that point. All of my boys is laughing, I knew what was up, so I know I had to jot down my jokes. I had to get, my homie got crossed in basketball practice the other day, that's how I was gonna come at him, <laughs> right? You have to stack them up, because if you're not ready, they gonna get you. So, he says, coffee, and that's not nothing new to me. But then, after the class laughed, he decided to give it another shot. Like, no, no, no. Is it Kofi or is it Kofi? And then everybody's running around calling me Kofi for the rest of the day, so I can't have that, right? So I have to stop him there at that point in time. <laughs> My boy is over here laughing because he knows that he was probably within that mix as well. But I had to stop him at that point. I went, no, no, you know, it's, it's Kofi. It's, you know, four letters, two syllables. Not that difficult. We could work through it together. <laughs> and, you know, he, he said something along the lines of, wow, you know, that's, that's different. We're just gonna call you K. Is it okay if we call you KK? <laughs> I'm like, all right, you know, there's too many K's in a row for me. I'm not really comfortable with that. And I said, we can leave it at Kofi. And, and he said, you know, all right, I'm gonna, 
I'm going to try to get it right for you. And that, you know, oftentimes that's what happens. We allow people that have no bearing on our life to come in and change our names and we just accept it. So you have to imagine when I, when I received this letter from a friend of mine from, from a state prison with an inmate personnel number branded at the end of his name and didn't sit well with me. And let me tell you why. It, it, he was a man that I met in college, a man no different from, from you and I, right? A man that I met in college, a man that was a kind spirit and had this kindred soul, but they had labeled him with the criminals as if that was all he would ever be. So it didn't sit right with me. But then I got the letter, I opened it up, I, I, I unfolded the letter, and it was as if my boy said to me, I now know what my struggle is, which made everything else that I was just talking about pale in comparison. I now know what my struggle is. And what I'm gonna to read to you is, is an excerpt exactly from the letter that he wrote to me. He said, initially, after I was sentenced, I gave up on myself. I slowly became consumed by negative thoughts. He, he was frustrated and he was highly stressed. And he said, I began to pray more and I began to exercise more and I began to read more. And within doing so, he had found a silver lining within his sentence, which allowed him to write his next sentence to me where he says, I now understand my struggle. And the emotion of the letter, it, it, it immediately switched from being down and out to high in spirits. And I'm thinking to myself, how is it a man that was just in my position not too long ago, how is it that he's high in spirits? And then things started to click. Sometimes by seeing everything, you don't really see anything at all. And he was now in this place where all of the distractions and all of the noise that had been eliminated, so he was able to focus and hone in on his voice. And he said that his voice told him what he came to do. And when I say what he came to do, I mean what he came to do on this earth. And that's a magnificent feeling to feel once you finally find it. So upon his release, he's going to be setting up an entertainment company. He has plans to do so much more. I'm, I'm extremely proud of him. And the moral to that story is that sometimes your struggle, sometimes your struggle will lead you to exactly where you need to be. And when it does, don't run from it, run towards it. If you have any aspiration of knowing who you are and what you came here to do, then run towards it. So, when I'm reading this letter, chills start to make, make its way through my body. He had charged me with two quintessential questions. The first question being, what it is that I came here to do, and then the follow-up question is, am I doing it? Because, the only thing worse than not knowing what your path is, right, is knowing what your path is and refusing to follow it. And the thing about me, I actually knew, I knew what my path was. I knew that I was, you know, pretty good at public speaking. I had this love for poetry. And I had this undying affinity towards writing. But Things like, feelings like, you no, know, ain't no money in that. That makes us turn around. Especially us, we want to get fly, we want to get jiggy, we want to be fresh in front of everybody, right? And as soon as we hear ain't no money in something, we turn it around. And then there's the, the next thing that happens, the next thing is, we see a lot. We don't see anything. And all we see is a whole bunch of people doing the same thing that we want to do, and they've already been doing it for quite some time, 
which makes us turn around. I felt, I felt trapped. And I felt trapped because I was making bad decisions upon bad decisions. I was not who I truly was, right? And all I wanted to do was know what I came here to do. Once you understand that your struggle, your struggle is made for you in order to become more of a lethal weapon in, in, in what it is that you came to do, then things will start to make sense. You know, sometimes the bad decisions will be made and the bad decisions are the right decisions because they lead you to where you're supposed to be. And I had this plan upon leaving, leaving school. I had this plan where, you know, I was gonna take all the money that, you know, I made over internships, made over, you know, semesters of grinding, doing X, Y, and Z, and I was going to start, you know, um, a business. But let me tell you what happened. I lost all my money, not once, I, I lost it twice. Tried to make it back, lost it again. So I got landed deeper in this depression. And it reminds me something of uh, my man Steve Harvey said. He said that in order to reach the next level, the next dimension, you have to break through this glass ceiling. And in and, and breaking through the glass ceiling, you have to expect that there'll be some bloodshed. Nobody's ready to bleed, though. I told myself I could either stay in crisis or keep going, and I chose to keep going. And I chose to start listening to what it is in my mind that said, you know, you're talented and you're gifted at this. Try this out for a little bit. Just hang in there, give it a couple months and see what happens. And I believe there's like three people in here. There's, there's people that already know, you know what their gift is and, and what it is that they came to do and they're sharing it. And then there's the second person who's in between where they, they kind of know what their gift is but they're not sharing it at all. And there's, then there's the people that don't know what their gift is. And I'm gonna take you back again to what Steve Harvey said. He said, your gift is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. Your gift is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. You don't even really have to think about it. You just got to do it. And you just got to stick to it. And yeah, there may be a million and one people doing what you're doing, but let me tell you something. So long as you're in your lane, then you create what you, what you are. So long as you want to make money, then you're going to make money in what, whatever it is that you do. You just got to stay in your lane and you just got to keep pushing. And I know even after I'm saying that, there's still people like you, people, people like me in the crowd that, you know, are pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth and praying back and forth for God to show me the way, show me my path, show me my path. But sometimes you just got to stop and think and, and, and realize what's in front of you. You can't see it all at, this, at, all at once. You have to stop and really hone in, hone in on what's in front of you. Because if you're doing that, then you're paying, paying attention to your gifts and you're not being resistant. And, and, and you don't have to say, oh, blessings ain't coming. Oh, Jesus, why, 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 why change ain't coming? You don't have to do that. Because once you're in your lane, everything, everything falls upon your lap, and then you just gotta keep moving through the through what it moving through your struggles. So when you feel that epiphany hit you, let it hit you. That that one thing that you that comes into your life and it, it changes your anatomy, let it change you. And there will there come a point where 
there come a point where you know exactly where you need to be. And when you reach that point, don't leave. Stay where you are. Because that's where you're supposed to be. It, 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 it's, it's, not, it's not scientific at all. It is scientific, but it's not scientific to the point where it's hard. It, it, it's, it's arduous, yes. The grind is arduous, the struggle is arduous, but once you're doing what you love to do, what you came here to do, there's so much purpose that it's going to push you to the next dimension. Your life is much bigger than you. I, I, I wanted to ensure that I tell you guys that. Your life is much bigger than you. So it's important to do the things that you were meant to do and, and not really automatically chase what the fame and the dollar signs are pushing you to, but what you actually came to do. There's much more to you than that. And, and last month, I went to Ghana for the first time and I got the opportunity to see how rich our land was. And I saw people who had endless opportunity, and then there was the, were, were the brothers and the sisters on the other side of the spectrum whose existence seemed irrelevant. And as you guys probably already know, with all of the resources and all of the wealth that we have within you know, the country as well as the continent, that no person should ever feel irrelevant and that's why it's important for you to do the things that you came here to do, the things that you were meant to do. So don't ever undermine your importance to the world. Your presence alone inspires the people where you are from. So when you get up in the morning, remember what you came to do. Remember, in doing what you came to do, that you allow people to do the same. Remember that you're inspiring that little boy and that little girl and showing them that they are relevant and that their names do matter. And it doesn't matter if they come from, from Nork or Nima. It doesn't matter if they come from Trenton or, 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 or Tema. It doesn't matter if they come from Lagos, Lagon, or, or London. Your names mean something. So make sure they pronounce it correctly. Thank you.